Hey everybody, I'm Emily, one of the designers with The Quilted Cow, and today I'm super excited to show you the latest in our Back Home Pillow Series accessories. This is the Cardinal Joy accessory, and it is for November, and I can't wait to show you how to put this together. First though, let's thank our sponsors. We're sponsored by Creative Grids, Cutters, Mats and Rulers, and Husqvarna Viking Machines. Let's get started. So this is our back home pillow and it is a monthly series. The accessories are different every month. So the back home pillow is just this pillow that you see here. You can find kits for this on our website. If you don't already have it, head on over to our website. The kit is a helpful heifer kit. It will have everything that you need in order to make one quilted pillow. The pillow form is not included, just the fabric and, and the, the muslin that you need to quilt the pillow. It will also have your finger snaps and the paper pattern in the kit. So grab yourself one of those kits if you haven't already gotten one, make yourself a pillow, and then we can make our accessory. Now every month we do a different accessory that snaps on and off of this pillow. This is the accessory for November. It is called Cardinal Joy and it is a really darling accessory to make. So make sure you head on over to our website, thequiltedcow.com, grab yourself an accessory kit. The accessory kit is going to include all of the fabric that you need, the interfacing that goes inside of it, the finger snaps, and also a paper pattern inside of the kit. If you would like, also, our helpful heifer patterns are always a postcard, I, I'm sorry, a postcard pattern. You can grab yourself one of the postcard patterns if you would like that as well. So head over to our website, grab yourself the kit, get your items cut out, get all your fabrics cut out, and then I'm gonna show you how to put this together. So as you can see here, I've got everything cut out, some items almost put together. I went ahead and, and pre-sewed some of the items. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start by making sure whenever we cut out our fabrics that we label them. We want to label each piece and there's a corresponding letter with each piece as you cut it out. If you would like these ABC123 pins, they're magic pins, you cut out your pieces and then you just pin this to all of the pieces that you have that correspond with that letter and you can grab them easily. Otherwise, make a mark, figure out some way to label each of your pieces that does not leave a permanent mark on your pieces so that you can keep yourself organized. Now the pattern is going to tell you to grab some of the squares and draw a diagonal line from corner to corner on the wrong side of those squares. I've done that with everything that I needed to do that with, but you'll notice here is one of my squares that has the diagonal line drawn on the wrong side from corner to corner, and that's just as easy as, as you can make it. And I used a friction pin. Friction pins are one of my favorites. They are heat erasable. This line is what you're gonna sew on. So the instructions in the pattern will tell you to put this square on whatever piece it tells you to put it on. You're going to place it where it tells you to, sew on the line, cut a quarter inch away, and then trim that off, and then press everything open. So I've done that with one of my squares, and I've also done that with one of my rectangles. So this piece tells you to put it on the bottom left corner of this rectangle. You will wanna check your picture on the pattern. Make sure that you have your rectangle in the correct position. If it needs to be positioned this way, or if it needs to be positioned this way, it just depends. So make sure it's in the correct position before you put it in the bottom left corner, otherwise you might put it in the wrong corner. I sewed on the line here, I'm gonna trim a quarter inch away and then press that open. There's other pieces that you're gonna put them directly on another square. And then you're still going to sew on the line, trim a quarter inch away and press that open. So let me show you on the trimming part of that. If you place your ruler, the quarter inch line of your ruler on your stitch line, and then you're just going to trim that a quarter of an inch away, take it to your iron, and you're gonna press that open. So that is now the corner, and this is called a snowballed corner. We also tend to call them flippy corners. The other thing with the square, we're gonna turn this into a half square triangle. So trim that off, 
and then I'm going to take it over to the iron and press it open and this is turn this into a half square triangle. So in this project you're going to make some half square triangles. You're also going to do some flippy corners and your rectangles. Let me get these pressed and then I'll lay them out. All right, so I press those open and now I've got them in about the spot that they're going to need to go in. There's a few other things I wanted to point out to you, a couple of other items. One is for the beak and for the face of the cardinal, you're going to end up overlapping that square in the corner. So it's going to overlap by a quarter inch. That way, whenever you make your beak, you don't lose the, the point of the beak. You also don't lose the point of the face on that. So whenever I set this up, I'm still going to put it in the bottom left corner, but you only want to do one corner at a time so that we have that overlapping there. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this. I'm going to trim it, press it, and I'll be right back and I'll show you what that looks like. So now that I've got that finished, you'll notice that the squares, they overlap on the one side. And so there's a quarter inch overlap and that's going to be in your seam allowance. So you want to make sure that you have your beak and your face doing the same exact thing. Another item that I wanted to show you was I went ahead and sewed the branch piece onto the background piece. And then I have my, my squares that are going to go in the corners. One is going to go in one corner in the bottom left corner. The other one, the cardinal body, is going to go in the top, uh, top right corner. So even though it's the same size, what I mean by that is that once I sew it and I flip it open, it's going to cover that top right corner. And this one, whenever I sew it and I flip it open, it's going to cover the bottom left corner. So make sure that you, you keep your diagonal lines oriented correctly so that those go in the correct corners. All right, so this is now the branch piece and it's got one of the leaves on one side and the cardinal tail on the other. So we're going to set that aside for now. And then the last part that I need to show you that is a little bit different than what we normally do is we're going to make this half square triangle here and then we're going to add it to the bottom corner here. So we're actually going to use this as a flippy corner for the bottom part of this one. In order to do that, and I've already drawn the line, I've drawn a line diagonally corner to corner making sure that I cross over the seam here in the middle because I only want half of this piece to be showing on the bottom corner. Now when I place this on the bottom corner, the bottom right corner of this rectangle, I'm going to make sure that my background square is in the top right position so that when it opens up, it's going to open like this. And this is going to make part of the cardinal body. You'll, you'll see it over here. It's going to make this, oh, let me see here, sorry, this right here for the wing. So this is going to make the background and the bottom part of the, the, the back of the cardinal for the wing part. So that's what we're making right here. So in order to do that, we need to make sure that that background corner or the background triangle is going to be to the right and then the body is to the left. So I'm going to go ahead and get this sewn together, trim it, press it, and I'll show you what it looks like when I get back. All right, so I've got the wing put together. You can see how the background is on the right side and the back of the cardinal is on the left. And what we're going to do here is it'll be time to start putting the cardinal together. Now, one of the other things that I did was to make sure that I did all the flippy corners on all the pieces that it says on the pattern. So I've already got all of that done on all the rest of the pieces. Make sure that you've done all of that, lay out all of your pieces, and get ready to put things together. So one of the things I like to do, I'm going to start with the cardinal, and we're going to put the top of the cardinal's head together. Then we're going to put the face and the beak together. Once those are together, we're going to sew the top of the head to the face and then we're going to sew those two together. So let me go ahead and put the top of the head and the face together and I'll show you what those look like whenever I get back. All right, so now I've got the top of the cardinal put together. I've got his entire head put together. Now it's time to go ahead and put his body together. So I'm going to sew these three pieces to each other and then I'm going to sew these three pieces to each other 
So those two together, and then I'm gonna add this other piece on the side. So as you're looking at the pattern, it just says to refer to the picture to put everything together. Take it in small increments, make sure that you have just the, the areas that go together, and then you get one section, one segment put together. It makes it a little bit easier. Take your time with it though, lay it out as you go along, keep laying it out, put it back down and, and lay it out again, and that way you'll be able to reference the picture and make sure that you stay on track. So I'm gonna get this segment put together, and then I'll be right back and show you what that looks like. All right, so now I have the cardinal body together, now it's time to put the branch and the leaves together. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sew this extra little branch piece and the background, and then I'm going to add this leaf piece to the rest. So I'm gonna sew these together, and then I'm gonna sew all three of these pieces together. And then after I've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and sew the entire cardinal together, and I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So I'm gonna get this segment put together, and then I'm gonna put these three sections together and show you what that looks like when I get back. All right, so now we've got the cardinal put together and we can set him aside for now. I like to get the biggest area of lots of piecing out of the way, although I do have to admit the letters, there's some piecing that goes along with these. It's pretty simple though. A lot of just, you know, adding top and bottom of the O and then the sides to the O, put the bottom part of your J together, add the background and then add the side. And then same thing with the Y here, we're going to, put the bottom part of the Y, add in the little space in between, and then the top part of the Y, and then put the side on. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started making the letters. I'm gonna start by making the J. I'm gonna go ahead and put these bottom two pieces together, put this background piece on, and then add the stem of the J to that. And I'll show you what that looks like whenever I get back. All right, so I have the J put together, and you'll notice that the stem went on that just great. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is put the O together. I've already sewn the top and bottom of the middle part of the O, and then I've got the two sides. And so I'm gonna get these two sides sewn on here, press them open, and I'll show you what that looks like when I get back. All right, so the O, super simple to put together. We've got that together. The next thing we're gonna do is put the Y together. So the Y is gonna go together in four different segments basically. We've got the bottom part of the Y, here's the middle and then the top part, and then here's the side. So I'm gonna put these two pieces together, put these three together, and then add the side to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that done. I'll show you what this looks like whenever I get back. Just remember, it's the top two pieces, the bottom two pieces, and then put those together and then grab the side. Now I've got my joy together, so I've got the letters together at least. Now I need to put the background strips in between, so, and then one on either side. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew each piece, each of these pieces together, and then I've got my top border and my bottom border of the joy, and I'm gonna put those two on. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the letters together with the background pieces, and then put the top and bottom on that, and I'm gonna show you what that looks like whenever I get back. All right, so I've got Joy put together, and now it's time to add the cardinal to it. Like I said, if you wanted to, you could come and trim off some of these extra edges here just to make it, make it a little bit nicer whenever you're putting it onto the side of the letters. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take off this little bit, the little raggedy bits here. And one thing I like about this cutter is that it is both left and right handed, so you don't have to you don't have to change the blade around, anything like that. You just open it up either way, one way or the other. So I just wanted to trim that off and clean up that one edge. And that's going to make it a little bit easier to add it to the side of the joy. So whenever I do that, I'm just gonna line it up. And if you wanna use pins, use pins. I do not. <laughs> As I've said before, usually whenever I use the pins, I end up sticking myself way too much. So I might use a clip to kind of hold this together just to make sure that everything stays where I want it to stay. But now I'm gonna sew this together and I'm gonna show you what this looks like whenever I get back and I'll show you how to finish out the accessory. Be right back. All right, so I have the joy and the cardinal put together and now it's time to add the interfacing. So I've cut my interfacing to size and then I'm going to lay it on the wrong side of the pieced block. Bring this over here real quick. And 
Just going to make sure that it goes there. Now, your piecing may be a little bit off, and I've said it before, you do want to make sure that you have as accurate of a quarter inch seam allowance as possible whenever you're making this accessory. That way everything fits correctly. But I'm going to now just press this to the wrong side of my block. Make sure, of course, that the bumpy side of the interfacing is against the fabric because the bumpy side is the glue side. So you want to make sure that you have the glue on the back of the fabric and you're not getting it on your iron or your pressing mat. So just give this a moment to heat up. Get nice and covered on that. Once I've got that done, I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to press from the other side. You may notice that there might be some spots where your interfacing is slightly larger than your block. You might notice that your block is slightly larger than the interfacing. That's okay. Just make sure that it's all within a quarter inch seam allowance. So none of that is going to show once you get the backing sewn on. And you're going to take your backing and your block, put them right sides together. And I do like to go ahead and clip all the way around to make sure that everything stays where I want it to stay. And you're going to sew a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around, leaving about four inches open. And I like to put it in the bottom, but you're going to leave about four inches open so that we can flip this block right side out whenever it's time. And the other thing that I like to do is I'm going to leave that four inches, three to four inches open in this large space here so that you don't have a seam that you have to worry about folding under. It makes it a little bit easier whenever you're folding it, whenever you get it turned right side out. So I'm going to take this over to the machine. I'm going to get this sewn on and I'll show you how to flip that right side out in just a moment. All right. So I've sewn it together. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clip my corners. So we're going to just gently feed the accessory through our opening. Okay, so I've got all that. Now I'm gonna press this really good. Whenever I do this, I do like to kind of roll that seam to get, get it even in between the backing and the front. So real quick, I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch all the way around an eighth of an inch all the way around. That's gonna close that opening. I'm gonna show you what that looks like when I get back and I'm gonna just do a quick tutorial on the finger snaps to help you make sure that you get those put in place. Be right back. So I sewed around that eighth inch seam allowance all the way around and I went ahead and clipped my threads and I'm ready to add my finger snaps. Now, you do wanna double check your pillow, make sure that your pillow has the correct snaps on the top and bottom or the coordinating snaps on the top and bottom. And we've gone over this before. I do wanna just do the anatomy of the snaps real quick. We've got a cap. Each set is two caps, one socket and one stud. So you've got two sets of snaps in your kit. We're gonna mark where we need to mark, which is a half inch in from each corner. So I just line up my half inch mark here and my half inch mark here, grab a pin, some sort of marking utensil and put a little dot there. This dot will be cut through and covered up so you don't have to worry about if this is a permanent mark or if it is a get rid of it at some point mark. And then we're going to poke our hole. Now there's two tools that you can use. I do like this precision seam ripper. It has a curved blade. You can take the blade and you can cut through all the way through. You can use your, your small little cutting mat if you wanted to, but you'll cut all the way through and put a little hole right just like that. And it needs to go all the way through your fabrics. That way the cap can go all the way through and come out the other side. And then we're going to install a stud snap on the top. And you want to make sure that the caps are on the front of your accessory. Now the other tool you can use, and this is my new favorite tool, it is a little hole punch. And there's a little, there's a little post right here in the middle of that. You're going to take that, you're going to put this in. This is just like any other hole punch that you might use for paper. And you're going to put that little punch right on top of your hole and you're gonna squeeze that. Once again, this was the Cardinal Joy accessory, part of our Back Home Pillow series. You can find kits for this on our website, thequiltedcow.com. You can also find kits for the pillow on thequiltedcow.com. They include everything that you need to make 
either the accessory or the pillow. And then you can also grab your helpful heifer postcard pattern separately if you wish. Thank you so much for watching. Head on over to our website, check us out. Don't forget to like and subscribe to these videos so we can keep bringing you more content. Have a great day. Okay, you wicked cold quilters, good job. You made it to the end. We would like to thank our sponsors, Husqvarna Viking Sewing Machines, Creative Grids, Rulers, Rotary Cutters and Mats, and Wilmington Prints for the beautiful fabrics. Thanks for watching.